Hello and welcome to Orient Outreach. I'm your host, Stacey Calloway, and today I'm joined by 2021 Citizen of the Year, Matt Pfeiffer. Matt, how are you today? I'm doing fine, thanks. Thanks for having me on, Stacey. So we are, you know, as we said, in unprecedented times, and you are doing something really big, um, not only for Oxford, but also with the, you know, as a community effort. Talk to me about um, where were you when you first heard about mm. um, the tragedy? Um. It's funny, uh, still like a goosebumps just you asking that question. Um, I was actually uh, at work, uh, and I work uh, my store is right off M24, and um, was out to, uh, on Tuesdays, I'd pick up lunch for my staff. And so I was out picking up lunch, and uh, the sirens were uh, just going by. And I, I, you know, we've seen that. Obviously, any anytime there's a, an accident or whatever, we'll see a few uh, cop cars and ambulances, but, um, I had never seen anything like the amount of cars that were whipping by. They were going by on northbound and on southbound. So uh, I, you know, I'm tight with uh, some of our officials, and um, I got word pretty quickly what was going down. And um, yeah, it was uh, almost three weeks ago. It's hard to believe that it's been that long, but uh, it was quite a, quite a day. So I was I was you know basically just out grabbing lunch for the staff. And so you initially started. Um, something on Facebook. Talk to us about what you started to um, to give back. Well, um, I, you know, I'm pretty active on Facebook, as you know, and uh, maybe to a fault. Um, but um, one of the uh, one of the families that was directly impacted um, wasn't able to locate their granddaughter, and they happen to be friends of mine. So, actually, my initial response: This is uh, day one, uh, the the Tuesday, uh, was to just. Uh, per her request to share out and try and have people looking for her granddaughter. And uh, so I shared that out and um, and that just kind of took took a life of its own to where there were, uh, I believe it ended up by the end of that, within two days it was almost a thousand shares. Um, so people were concerned and, and looking and trying to figure that out. Unfortunately, we found out, um, you know, relatively quickly uh, that uh, you know, the search was called off. There was no, no need to go look for, uh, for the young lady. So, um, but I think because of that, that kind of, uh, you know, brought our, my Facebook page up to the forefront because so many people had shared and, and uh, so kind of just went right into, okay, what can we do? And uh, so the next morning, there was a, a community uh, uh, meetup for anybody who wanted to show up. Um, and uh, I was there. Uh, Wednesday morning after, and uh, from there uh, met up with some people, and we just started kind of going to work and filling needs. What needs to happen, and how can we uh, how can we fill those needs? And so that's uh, that was the beginning of. Uh, at the time, didn't really know what it was the beginning of, but that was the beginning of the Oxford Strong Community Group that uh, that I'm a part of now. And so, what did people start donating initially? Um, originally, uh, most of our focus was on. Um, just trying to be there for the the, uh, the first responders and for the students and trying to create safe places for them. So um, initially a lot of our efforts were on uh, you know getting uh, snacks and drinks um, and getting um, working on getting uh, counselors and animal therapy um, groups and uh, we and, and restaurants that could cater you know, large meals. And so it quickly evolved within, you know, a couple of days of just kind of getting our feet um, on the ground and realizing that there really isn't a, uh, a government response for this kind of thing. And I think we all assume there is. And one of the things that we've learned through this, and it's not that they aren't there and that they aren't partners with us, they are now, um, but um, there isn't something that just uh, is in place to deal with this kind of uh, tragedy. So luckily we have an incredibly giving community. Um, uh, and when I say that, when I talk about community, I talk about you know, Orion, Oxford, and surrounding areas because um, anything happens to any one of us, uh, we all come together and, and that is absolutely what we're seeing here. So you know, initially I got some posters going for you know, business to show support. We got that banner up over M24, which uh, we were able to get up that week after. Um, but. Uh, Real quickly, there were a lot of needs identified and uh, there was no, nothing set up to fill those needs. The biggest ones is where, where can we have students go that now can't go to school? Um, where can their families you know, get these kids help? 
and, uh, and bring them together so that they can be there for each other instead of being isolated. So it's more the socio-emotional needs you want it fulfilled. Yeah, yeah, which, but that, it ends up involving everything. When, when all of a sudden you have thousands of people who've just gone through an, a dramatic uh, experience and you have them all in one place, um, a place that basically became ground zero after the, the incident, um, then a lot of things start developing that you need. I mean, everything from uh, what, probably second day, third day, I got a call, hey, can you get us signs? We need signs on every door to get the media out because media was trying to go into the building where we're trying to create a safe space. Um, it was a lot of logistics on we need food, we need snacks, we need art supplies, um, we need uh, um, you know gloves, sanitizer, all of those things. So we put a big effort together um, to bring in uh, those types of products from locally and quite frankly from all over the world, believe it or not. Um, or at least people were ordering them from around the world and sending them to us. So we quickly converted um, uh, my, my building, my business over to a logistics head and we basically became the support arm for what was happening at the Legacy Center where you know many of the kids were uh, coming together. So would you say that was their ground, their ground zero, the legacy center? Yeah, that's that's what uh, those of us in the in the command center and working on this, that's what we would consider. Okay. Um, uh, because that's that's where our our lives have been. I mean, uh, I have friends that have basically have barely left the building other than to go shower, give their kids a hug, and come back. And it's been that kind of effort. Now we're getting three weeks in, and it's converting. Um, the uh, the needs are changing. Um, our response is changing to fit those needs, and uh, it's becoming, it's starting to look very, very different um, very quickly. It's, it's interesting to see how, um, how the transition goes, but, um, but it's, been a, uh, it's been an intense few weeks. What obligated you to do this? Because you're going through your own thing right now with uh, the flooding of your business, right? Well, the flood actually happened just a, a fluke thing that uh, some other pipe in the building burst while we weren't there. And because we had so much material there, uh, we, we have now spread uh, our, our operation and our both logistics for response to Oxford, as well as our business. Um, we've spread it out throughout a building that, we, uh, that my, my uh, store and warehouse were in because uh, yeah, we had about a couple inches of water we came into uh, uh, last Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So that's almost a week ago. And uh, at that point, you know, we had, we were, every day we were getting 100 packages from Amazon. We were opening, organizing, whether it was backpacks or whatever we needed for our response. And then we'd palletize them. And we had a uh, logistics company, a great local, uh, some local guys who would help us get them to where we needed to, whether it be funeral homes. Uh, we needed to get them to uh, churches. We needed to get them to the Legacy Center. Um, and that, we became kind of this, yeah, just this uh, group of people just making sure we got things where they needed them, when they needed them. Okay. Um, and yeah. you were instrumental in doing that. So talk to us about, you set up a website, right? Something where people can actually donate? Yeah, actually the, the, the group that, that I am now a part of, and, and uh, it's, we kind of all just came together through this. So mm -hmm. I don't actually know these, uh, these uh, folks that well, but we've uh, been able to accomplish a lot. Um, we are, uh, the OxfordStrongCommunity.org website okay. originally, and I'm an IT idiot, um, okay. so it started as uh, just um, my Facebook page, and I would put up, okay, we need this, and I'd post it, and because I do have a lot of people who look at what I do for charity-wise, a lot of people just came to it and we were able to fill it, and then these uh, young ladies that are very uh, smart in comparison to me when it comes to this stuff said, why don't we put this Google Doc up? And then we created the, they, I shouldn't say we, they created the Google Doc and I would, when the need came to us, they would put it there. And then what we found is people from around uh, the, uh, the command center, uh, which was just kind of forming other people who had needs, the Oxford schools, they started reaching out to us saying, hey, can you help us get the word out on this? Because we quickly became the official um, uh, place to look for information, but it was just pinned on top of my Facebook page. So then they converted it uh, here in the last week or so uh, to this website, which is much more long-term thinking. It's a much more efficient tool mm -hmm. and uh, they're awesome. Uh, Chelsea Pfeiffer, uh, who no relation, we met the day of the uh, okay. the, the first meeting after, but uh, she's the, one of the, the main people on it. There's a few others, Allie and Andrea and um, I'm gonna forget some of their names, but but it, it's really been kind of a cool evolution. Um, okay. Originally, we were basically, not basically, we were handling every meal. We'd get a call and say, okay, we need to feed 300 people at the Legacy Center tomorrow at noon. Can you guys get it done? And of course, we always said yes. 
And then it was getting on the phone at that point saying, hey, can you, do you, want, you want to donate food? Uh, who, you know, and we'd reach out and we'd connect people that wanted to, and there were people who were wanting to give, so we'd have to put that together, and then we'd set it up and, and set up those events. Um, who, were, who were some of your go-tos in terms of getting, getting food? Well, we got donated. food from so many people, but um, you you know, I, automatically, mm -hmm. I, I automatically go to people I know and trust because um, once I took those things on, uh, I was responsible and there was uh, I couldn't we had a lot of people offering from all over the state and, and even outside of the state but I couldn't count on people I didn't really know when I was told that you're feeding you know a family who's uh, the, a lot of it was like immediate families during the services and that and I was not going to pa pass that off mm -hmm. and have it fail so um, I went to a lot of people I know I mean uh, um, the restaurants around here 313 Opa Oat Soda um, Jets Pizza Sick Pizza um, went to, um, uh, uh, geez, uh, uh, Woodchip Barbecue, uh, Patrick and those guys are always awesome in this stuff. Um, went to uh, Italia Gardens, did so much through this. Um, uh, all of these places, and we're working on a list and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna ask that people in the community step up and go and support the businesses. A lot of us, I mean, I haven't worked on my business in three weeks really, I've left it to my staff and then we had the flood and that's a whole nother thing. Um, but, but these restaurants, People don't realize what happened. When this tragedy happened, they all had Christmas gatherings booked at their facilities. They had all these Christmas meals. It was all canceled. Everybody, um, for the most part, said, yeah, we're not gonna have Christmas parties now. We saw the parade in Oxford get canceled. Ours got postponed. So when that happened, these businesses that count on this time of year that have already had an incredibly challenging couple of years, not only lost all that business, but then they stepped up and said, yes, but we're here for you, what do you need? And they would, without question, uh, so many great people uh, that would just step up and they were there for us and we could get things done. And so... Um, and that's it, what it's about, the community yeah, coming together yeah, and being supportive. It's a kind of that whole thing where you, you, know, you, you go through a tragedy, and I always liken back to 9-11 because it's so seared in my brain, uh, but really any tragedy that I've ever gone through... Um, and that I think any of us have, it stays with you and, and uh, um, it's, hard to, it's hard to clear that, but it, well, one of the most amazing things that happens is uh, you see, when you see the worst in people, um, it's usually the time that we finally get to see the best in people and everybody kind of sets their politics aside and says, let's get together, let's take care of those that need it in our community. And um, it's been incredible. I, I think we, we tried to do a count um, and after about uh, 10 days, we had fed over 15,000 wow. meals. So some people multiple times, um, obviously, but 15,000 meals. And um, it was just a few of us on phones working things and you know, then I'd get lots of volunteers, hey, can you go pick that up, drop it off there? Um, and then pallets and pallets of snacks and drinks. And um, as I was walking in here, we just were finalizing the Oxford backpack situation. Um, we're uh, procuring uh, backpacks that there's a shortage of, but they want clear backpacks for the kids to go back. We've been scouring the globe for that and uh, people okay. working on that. So it's a very, very broad effort. And, um, and now we're you know, finally on top of almost all of that. And now the whole focus is the families, uh, which we've been working with the whole way through to make sure that they have what they need um, to the best of our ability. Um, but we're looking at, uh, um, and we're helping them with Christmas and everywhere, everyone that needs it, we're helping the families through that. And then the, uh, the focus is gonna go primarily to the care, the mental care that's uh, to help people, you know, get through this and get, help the kids be okay to get back to school. We want the kids back in school as soon as possible. Okay. They need to be back in school. They're, right now, they're, their schedules have already been so messed up over the last couple of years. And uh, as we've learned from, uh, we've had a lot of people coming in from other tragedies uh, um, that have spoken with us uh, from Columbine, from 9-11, from uh, Park, uh, Parkland. And they, uh, they, they just, to a person, they said, this is, this is a very long-term situation. You're gonna be surprised how many years out we're gonna be dealing with this. And so we're trying to gear up for that. And, um, and that the quicker we can get these kids back in school and get into some sort of routine and normalcy, the better it's gonna be for the kids, for the families, and for the community as a whole. So that's our, that's our mission as it's converting. Okay, and that's certainly our mission too, to make sure that they, they get what they need. So with the website and everything, in terms of donations, 
is this a long-term effort? Like, what else do you guys need to, to make well, this work? Well, we're, we're doing a, a lot of our meetings now are, like I said, focused on, um, on the longer-term care. We believe we've got, you know, the backpack situation under control. We believe we've got, we're kind of getting out of the feeding people business because, you know, we don't live in a poor community. We work on feeding people every week anyway, and right. that's still our focus, but that's uh, outside of this tragedy. So we want to go to where our, our, the real needs are and um, we will still continue to accept donations. Um, our group has now uh, formed a 5013C, so we will um, uh, be continuing to help, whether it be for family needs. There are the big funds that everybody's aware of, that everybody's pushing, you know, Oxford Bank, and we were supporters of that. We think that was a great way to do it, rather than a lot of independent GoFundMes, because it gets a little tricky for people to know Which wait, what's right legit, we, and we did find multiple examples of scams that were popping up. Uh, so we are gearing people to Oxford Bank. Um, our fund will be um, Oxford Strong Community. We have started receiving donations for that. And we're gonna, we are gonna be less hand tied than the Oxford Fund. The Oxford Fund is, uh, there's, gonna, there's a board, there's a, there's a setup that happens, and uh, that distribution will be geared towards the 11 families. Um, we wanna continue to support the family's immediate needs which uh, you can't do with those funds because those funds are gonna be tied up a bit to go through that process. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna continue to operate as Oxford Strong Community in, um, and it's an evolving situation, so it may ebb and flow, but uh, you know, we're gonna finish up the backpack project, finish up the immediate um, needs at, at Legacy to support them, but that's about winding down and then it's all into the longer term for the families. Uh, in between now and when there is distribution um, and the long-term mental health needs of the community. And that's what we're being told by these other um, uh, people who've learned and gone through this, that uh, that is going to be the most important uh, focus going long-term. Uh, these, the ramifications of what has happened will continue to reverberate for years and it'll reverberate through all our communities surrounding. And, and, um, and they, you know, it doesn't just go away, these kids, you go through something like that, it's with you. And uh, we can't ignore that. We can't just try and move past it. Um, we have to you know, help them uh, have a, as much of normalcy as we can so that they can be strong, so that they can go on to, uh, you know, to live the lives they deserve to live. That's right, and this is why you're 2021 Citizen of the Year. Just doing things like this from the heart, um, yeah. certainly you know, it's heartfelt, and we certainly um, appreciate you doing this. If people want to reach out to you, we know through the website. Is there a number that they can contact you as well? Or? We have we have we have the email through the website. A lot of people have my cell phone, and uh, you know they're welcome to use it. I don't think I'm going to put it out here, but okay. um, I get a lot of messenger uh, uh, requests through Facebook, um, and uh, I respond to them all. Sometimes it takes a bit, um, but if you just uh, email at me at matt at nflooring.com. Uh, that is where, and you put in the subject line, if you have something you wanna give or something you need, uh, that's how I'm trying to keep those straight uh, if they need to get directly to me. But really the best source is to go to our website. You can, uh, we continually update that. That is being updated um, hourly, not, not even daily, hourly. So if there are needs, uh, we're gonna have them there. If there are people that, if we need volunteers, um, we're gonna have that on there. And we're also gonna disperse the information necessary. A lot of people are asking about backpacks and getting concerned if they are gonna get one or not get one. You're gonna get one. We're, we're, we've, uh, we've handled all of Orion's needs, uh, so Orion's got the backpacks that they need as of now, and uh, we have uh, uh, just finalized a deal kind of as I was coming in here. We're gonna have backpacks for every Oxford student, so you are not gonna have to go out and find your own. We're gonna have them there. We're gonna take them to the school so that you can go to the school, that the school's gonna distribute them because they're gonna do it best to make sure that everybody gets them. And um, so that's being handled. So that's something else that we don't have to be concerned with if you're an Oxford or, or an Orion family really at this point. Well, we know that you're a busy guy and we certainly thank you for you know sitting in and talking to us about this. And My pleasure. Thank you once again for all of your efforts. Well, appreciate hey, it. I appreciate what you guys do in the community to help uh, connect and uh, to give uh, give us a voice when we're trying to pull things together. And so uh, thank you. And I know we've got some stuff coming up. We're going to be back at soon with the, uh, the food, uh, uh, food donation. So uh, we'll keep working together and we appreciate uh, ONTV. Appreciate all of you out there for your continued support. All right. Well, thank you, Matt Pfeiffer. And that'll wrap it up for this edition of Orient Outreach. I'm your host, Stacey Calloway. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.